Yes, uh, once again, welcome to Dr. Malik, uh, your number one doctor, your everyday doctor, your answers to all your medical concerns. So today we are going to talk about irregular periods. Irregular periods. What are irregular periods? Yes, of late uh, it has become a very big problem. A lot of women, uh, a lot of women have have gone through uh, a number of problems because of irregular periods. And irregular periods have led to a lot of women to get failure to conceive. See, they don't know when ovulation comes. They don't know when when to expect to visit the boyfriend, to visit the husband, and when to expect to have a child. This has made them get tagged or uh, identify themselves as infertile simply because of irregular periods. Well, irregular periods come come with a number of symptoms. It's either heavy periods or repeated periods, or it's either light, or it's either single spotting. Spotting, for example, in a month, you, you, you may bleed today and tomorrow, and then the rest of the day you'll be spotting. You'll be getting some bleeding on your on your knee or on your pad. Every after a number of days, you, you see you see some bleeding. When it's heavy, you bleed a lot of. You, you can change up to up to up to four or five pads in a day, and it's continuous to a number of days. To a number of days, you do that for for, for three or four or five days, bleeding heavily. Mm -hmm. So repeated. You go in your periods today and tomorrow, then you stop. Then after a few days, you repeat again. After a few days, you repeat again. So it becomes repeated. So prolonged, some people, when they start periods, they don't stop until after like 14 days, until after like 15 days. Some people even extend up to until they've gotten medication to stop it. So irregular periods, apart from, apart from, apart from bringing uh, conception or fertility problems, it can also bring uh, self-esteem or confidence problems or lack of confidence within people because, you see, you're worried you cannot move in public. You're all the time thinking, oh, what if, what if this blood comes today? What if, what if I'm in a meeting and then the blood, the bleeding starts? So it has brought a lot of concerns. So in this particular video, we're going to talk about what brings about regular periods. What are the causes? How to treat it? And how to go about it? However, there are circumstances in which we need to understand that irregular periods are expected. For example, when you are pregnant, when you are pregnant, you are expected to you are expected to, to miss your periods because you're pregnant. Because you because you're pregnant, you cannot have periods when you are pregnant. Menopause. Menopause means a, a, a period when women stop going into periods. So menopause. In menach, menach means when, when a woman is starting to get periods. They are usually irregular, either heavy or unstable, or the patterns are abnormal, or they delay, or they they come they come in bits because the hormones are just trying to the hormones are trying to to get adjusted to the new kind of physiology double physiology the new environment and then medication side effects there's some medications when you take when you take those medications and your your your, your periods will stop coming they will either become distorted especially the hormonal re replacement therapies you find some women who are on on, on pills COCs or POPs depending they have they have abnormal abnormal periods and some people with who, some women who smoke, you 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 highly at a high chances of getting irregular periods. They either miss or get heavy periods. So smoking can also bring abnormal periods. Now, <clears throat> before before we look at everything, there are some things that you need to know. There are some things that you need to know about about periods and how they come about. There is a a part in our body called the brain, which everyone knows. The brain, which everyone knows. And within the brain, there is a part called a pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is responsible for production of hormones, which are responsible for initiation of someone's cycle. Initiation of someone's... We have the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. So, Follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone are responsible for production. For example, the follicle stimulating hormone uh, is produced from the pituitary gland, goes to the ovaries, and it stimulates the ovary to start uh, the process of development of the follicle or what we call of what will develop into an egg or ovum later on within the within the month. So if that hormone is not in right place, if that hormone is not Controlled well, or if it's excess or less, it means the actual process will not have started, will not again, will not start. There is what we call a luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is responsible for ejection or eruption or, uh, or 
coming out of the egg from the ovary from the ovary to the oviduct of the trochlear tubes or the ampulla where fertilization takes place if i may show you this is the this is the female reproductive system and these are the ovaries these are the ovaries which are responsible for production of the egg so the egg moves from here to the ampulla here for fertilization and the sperm comes from this side where it meets the egg here for fertilization so if those two hormones are not balanced of course those other hormones like progesterone like estrogen they are all very much responsible if they're not if they're not balanced you, you're likely to get irregular periods and also looking at the ovary if these ovaries have issues have problems you're also likely to, to get irregular periods so what are the main common problems that bring about irregular periods categorically what are the main problems that bring about irregular periods categorically the number one problem is when you have imbalanced hormones you're likely to get irregular periods for example if you have an excess of either progesterone or estrogen hormone you're likely to get irregular periods you can find you can always find out this by doing a hormonal assay a hormonal profile assay this is a test that when done it looks at the whole body hormones depending on the one selected but mainly you have about five hormones that that control the woman's periods and cycle and reproduction we have follicostimulating hormone, we have the luteinizing hormone, we have progesterone hormone, we have estrogen, and we have antimural hormone. But in this particular case, if there is any kind of irregular or uncoordinated or imbalanced kind of hormone, one of those within, you're likely to get, you are likely to get. And each of these hormones has a specific kind of treatment that is required. Each of these hormones has a specific kind of treatment that is required. That is why it is important for you if you have irregular periods and you need to find out what the cause exactly is you need to do this hormonal profile assay when you do it you find out each hormone specifically and each hormone is treated in a different way is handled in a very different way from the other why because each hormone affects the system in a different way so it's important for you to find out by doing that and then you treat accordingly your doctor treats accordingly so that's the first thing about hormones then we have uterine problems uterine problems if you have a uterine problem, you're likely to get irregular periods. What are the examples of uterine problems? Now, this is the uterus. This is the uterus. And each part here within the uterus can be responsible. There are over four common, common problems within the uterus and that can bring about that can bring about irregular periods. And one of them being a PID. If you have a PID, it's a pelvic inflammatory disease. Talking about a pelvic inflammatory disease necessarily it doesn't mean it doesn't mean one disease it can be a lot of diseases or caused by a lot of uh, a lot of microbes bacteria but mainly in the upper centers of the female reproductive system so if it is here it's called endometritis if it is within these tubes it's called salpingitis if it is within here it can be called cervicitis but in simple terms a category of these is always called a PID so identifying where the disease is, if there is any, it is always important in the management of irregular periods. Because you can treat and get well in case your hormones and other body physical parts are well, are okay. You can treat and get, there's what we call endometriosis. Endometriosis. Endometriosis is when uh, this tissue, this is the endometrium, the tissue of this endometrium starts packaging itself either outside or in other body parts, in other body parts, it can even come here, or it can even come here, or there, or there, or depending, but that tissue is implanted where it's not supposed to go. So you end up getting heavy periods, or you end up missing periods, but when the blood is going somewhere else, instead of instead of flowing out, it's 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 flowing from this side of packaging, making a, a packet of blood. That is also a problem. Then there's what we call fibroids. Fibroids. Fibroids is also fibroids are a development of muscles within here. Remember when they develop, they, 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 they distort your hormones. So it is always important to do a, a number, of, a, a specific kind of scan, to look abdominal ultrasound scan, but specifically to look at if you have what we call intra intra uterine pathologies, physical pathologies, organic pathologies, to see if there are the causes. Because if there are those causes, they can be treated, they can be managed, and when they get managed, you can get well. There is what we call uh, cervical problems and uh, endocervicitis. When you have endocytosis, you may see spotting all the time, spotting or uh, blood after having sex or blood during sex. 
or abnormal or irregular bleeding yet the cause is here yet the cause is because of mosaicitis there is what we call polycystic ovarian syndrome polycystic ovarian syndrome polycystic ovarian syndrome is one of the causes of irregular periods these people usually are missed periods for a long period of time and then they get again and then they miss and then they get so the periods are always distorted and when they come sometimes they come in a in a very small spotting the spotting is there or the irregular irregular irregularity is there or there's missing or there's heaviness but all in all because PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome whereby this ovary here that is supposed to produce these ovaries here that are supposed to produce eggs or ovums yes the the follicles develop but they don't rupture for the eggs to come out so they go and the eggs get locked within here to form cysts cysts are like pockets of water pockets of water that are like pockets of water so when you have PCOS of course it is also controlled by hormones it's uh when you have PCOS you're also likely to get irregular periods and actually in this case you're also likely to get fertility problems difficulties in conceptions so what are the effects let us look at the effects of an irregular or delayed or abnormal bleeding one of the effects of irregular periods is infertility or difficulties in conceiving why because you might find this person they are having irregular periods but they are functioning in terms of ovulation is okay and they can get well pregnant very well when to to consider having productive sex or when to know that ovulation so that they have productive sex when they don't know so at the end of the day this person always uh misses out the important dates and have sex on the wrong date ending up missing or getting difficulties conceiving because this person cannot calculate the actual ovulation date i've made a video about ovulation date and how to calculate your ovulation you want to watch it then uh people who have actual at first someone who has irregular periods may not have picos or polycystic ovarian syndrome but then they develop picos because of the irregularity of the periods so it is also an effect that it can bring about that there is cervical or uterine diseases or abnormalities if you have irregular periods especially periods that come with uh, excessive repeated heavy or uh, abnormal patterns of bleeding you're likely to get uh uterine problems most of that because there is excessive death and growth of cells death and growth of endometrial cells you like to go for uh, endometrial cancers or cancers of the cervix i mean cancers of the uterine uterus now since we have looked at the signs the symptoms possible underlying causes and the options in the in the underlying factors now let us look at the, the treatment what are the treatment options how do we treat how do we treat irregular periods now i want you to understand this that irregular periods are treated only after finding out what the cause is because there are a multitude of causes like we have seen some of them there are multitude of causes there are a number of factors governing those causes so it's always important to test to check to do investigations that necessary investigations necessary and relevant investigations to do them and then you find out what the cause is exactly after finding out what the cause is exactly then you can treat it accordingly because one treatment for this might not work out actually will not work for this for example someone who has a pid as the, the, the aggravating factor or the causing factor will not be treated with pops and then someone who has a high a high a high concentration of progesterone hormone cannot be treated with pops why because you're increasing on the problem you're more like adding salt into water that's why you, you you need to test before you treat someone who has endocervicitis cannot be treated with hormonal replacement replacement therapy why because this is a this is a problem that will require antibiotics and anti-inflammatories of some kind and then someone who has a problem with the pituitary gland or the follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone will not be treated with antibiotics because these are hormonal controlled this is a hormonal controlled disease or disorder that is why it is important to do tests before treating before doing any kind of treatment because i've seen a lot of people who have been taking medications they have been taking a lot of medications for nothing make, taking a lot of medications wasting time and health because when you keep on treating in a wrong way your uterus or your other organs will get damaged uh, will get other disorders which which are not caused before but when you test you know the exact cause 
you get the right medication, you start on the right medication for the right amount of time, in the right quantities, then you can treat and go about this accordingly. The tests are done, these investigations are done, and and the exact causes are always found out before you before you, you put yourself on medication or before you start medication blindly. That is why it is very important for you to do tests to identify the cause and treat the actual cause with the right medication. So answering the question of how do we treat irregular periods, I would answer it by saying irregular periods are treated according to the cause because each cause has a different kind of treatment mode. Thank you.